My name is Dr. Elise Rubina, and if you haven't seen me before, um, I'm an associate professor in family studies and social work, and I'm the director of the family studies area. And I'm very, very pleased to welcome our guest, John Francis. He is the vice president of adult behavioral health at Tower House, which operates in multiple uh, counties in southern Ohio. And he's here today to talk to you a little bit about profession and helping professions, what Tower House does. Um, give you his impressions about the field. Um, and so, without any further ado, the magnificent and awesome <laughs> John Francis. Thank you for not giving me a standing ovation. I would have been too embarrassed to proceed and had to have gone home. So, the uh, part of the introduction, I'll blame Mike Goldman. Does anybody not know Mike Goldman? I'm going to put him on the spot. Most. Okay, so Mike and I go way back. Mike is currently the interim director of the Career Services Center. Um, I hired on at Tower House four years ago last month as the associate executive director of Center Point Health, which was the merger of three other agencies that happened in January of 08, with the hopes that when the executive director retired a year or two after I arrived, I would at least be a um, a candidate to be considered. Well, as it turns out, he left earlier than planned, and I slid into that position as interim and then finally executive director. And along about that time, uh, who shows up to be one of our board members at Center Point Health but Mike Goldman? And I like to embarrass him because, and by saying he, he immediately became one of my all time favorite people. So you are very fortunate, in my opinion, to have a person of his uh, experience his integrity and his uh, humble personality. He, he said very early on to me as an executive director, if there's anything you need from me as a board member, give me a call. Well, a lot of board members say that and hope you never, what? <laughs> call. But Mike meant that and um, so he ended up back here a year or so ago and, and uh, reconnected with me and said we got to get together. So he came down to uh, my office, met with me and um, some other folks, said, you know, I have, this, I have this vision, I have this dream. I said, I want Talbert House to be the employer of choice for you types of students. And I thought, well, ain't that an interesting idea? Let's, let's talk more. So we, I, I came up here to campus with one of our human resources, HR staff, Chris, Chris Eversall, who you may or may not have met yet, and we met with Mike and some other uh, faculty and kind of kicked around some ideas. And that led into, among other things, um, my being up here yesterday and today for an executive in residence. And I'm the third of these, second, second, of, second of three that um, are, are planned. So it's been a privilege. Uh, and I didn't honestly uh, know that I would enjoy it as much as I have. And I attribute that to the welcoming spirits and attitudes of faculty, but even more than them, the classes I've attended. And I had breakfast this morning with uh, four students and oh my gosh these I mean these people are on fire for uh, they have a passion for what they're doing of course they want to graduate and make income and pay off some bills and such but they want to they want to get out there and, and help people so that really led to an energized discussion over omelets and pancakes and coffee this this morning so I look forward to this time I'm tempted to have the first row or two of chairs moved to the back so but we won't we won't do that. So I'm going to cover a lot of things uh, today uh, by 11.45 or 11.50. Is that a deal? Okay. Tell you a little bit about me, which isn't all that interesting or relevant to why you're probably here. But then I'm going to get into three different handouts that uh, a couple folks will help distribute. And we'll walk through those. And I hope by that you'll have a little bit of understanding of what has brought me to this field as opposed to another direction I was heading in. And you can see a, a bit from a couple different perspectives what Talbert House has been doing, what we are doing, and what we're on the verge of doing. And uh, see some concrete uh, possibilities for where you might fit into either Talbert House or an agency like ourselves. Right? Anything else you want to cover? Anybody want to leave now or just you know, continue? Continue? Anybody vote to continue? Two people? Okay, we're going to continue. We'll go with the vote of the minority. Thanks. 
So I've been in the field about 30 years. I started undergraduate at Illinois State University as a math major heading into the non-lucrative field of computers. That's my first dry humor joke, okay? <laughs> so in my sophomore year, my dad, who worked for Caterpillar Tractor Company all of his career, which had its corporate headquarters in Peoria, Illinois, uh, had lined up a job in computers for me once I graduated. Had I taken that job, I would not still be working. I'd be happily retired and living much more comfortably than I do now. So I went to this church camp in New Jersey, a very pastoral setting. Jackie Onassis had a place down the road. I think Mike Tyson had a place down the road. And we worked with inner city kids, black and Puerto Rican kids coming out of the ghettos of New York City who were brought out for two-week stints. And during one of those stints, my first summer as Cabin 6 Junior Camp Counselor, pretty important, uh, not only did I meet my wife of now 36 or so years, um, but took kids each of those sessions up to Camp Out Hill. It was during one of those walks up to Camp Out Hill, one of the kids pulled on my shirt and said, hey, what are those, yeah, what are those things up there? I said, what do you mean? He said, what are those white things up in the sky? I said, stars. Stars. This 12-year-old kid had never seen stars in his life. Why? lights and pollution in the city. And something immediately grabbed my heart and I went back, changed my major to sociology because they did not yet have social work as an accredited program, but most of my classes were in social work and I've never regretted that decision. So I went into the lucrative field of social work, second dry humor joke, <laughs> maybe the last. So uh, graduated in 76, moved to Arkansas where my wife is from. Uh, worked in outpatient mental health, doing programs for three counties, individuals convicted of driving while under the influence, did some group counseling and substance abuse, uh, couldn't afford to be in grad school, heard about the, uh, the, uh, the program at University of Tennessee, had some friends in Nashville, Tennessee, we moved there, graduated from there in 1980 with an MSSW, Master of Science in Social Work. Uh, my dad had just died. A recurring theme in my life is to move back to family. So I moved back to Illinois to be close to my mom and provide some support there. Worked inpatient psych, saw classic examples of uh, catatonia, schizophrenia, depression, anxiety, etc. Got to observe electroconvulsive therapy, ECT. It's a very powerful experience. My office, I kid you not, was in an old broom closet. It measured about five by seven had a desk and a chair, there wasn't much extra space. Desk chair and a side chair, and that was about it. <clears throat> and my office was in the locked area of a locked unit, and you can imagine who was in my locked unit. Okay, kind of the worst of the worst, and criminals, and murders, and um, actively psychotic. So it made for an interesting day, uh, watching people walk by, so lots of stories there. Uh, want to do more, moved to Las Vegas of all places when our daughter was one, that was 30 years ago. And no, I didn't gamble. We lived in and ran a group home for behavior disordered kids, boys and girls, mistake, we changed to boys soon. Girls are tough. <laughs> any of you know any girls? They're tough. Um, particularly behavior disordered girls and a lot of hormones and all that. So we were there and out of our two years, first three months, last three months, zero time off, very intense very demanding, but some of the best training I've ever had, and, and without that, I'm not sure I could do what I'm doing today, nor I've done some other things. Move from there back to Illinois, be close to family for some other reasons, worked outpatient mental health, then moved to another job at a children's residential facility in Peoria and worked there for 16 years, grew with that, was in child welfare, residential, behavior disordered kids, many of whom had been abused physically, socially, sexually, uh, emotionally, uh, started a foster care program, oversaw special ed, started a criminal justice program uh, there, and then went from there after 16 years to run an agency in another state, then I worked in DD, ended up in Cincinnati for two reasons. One, a great opportunity with a great organization at Talbert House slash Centerpoint Health, and then secondly, at the time, our married daughter had one and a half kids, and we now have three grandkids 20 minutes away. So we live in my wife and I live in northern Kentucky. I'm about 20, 25 minutes south of Cincinnati. Uh, great place to live, great place to work. It's a, it's a good deal for us. So enough of that. So as we were talking at breakfast, uh, it's not uncommon for many students to, sheesh, what am I going to do? What am, where am I going to get a job? What are the possibilities? So I hope to give you some ideas about that, if not some answers today about some potential opportunities in southwest Ohio. 
Handout one is the blue and gold sheet. So this, this first handout is to give you on the left hand side of this uh, sheet of paper a very brief, very broad brush overview of center, I'm sorry, of Tabard House. At the bottom left, uh, I believe, is contact information for, I have to cheat, uh, Chris Eversall. So the bottom left corner of this handout, just put a star by that or just a mental reference to Chris Eversall, who is in our HR, our Human Resources Department. Chris has been up on your campus several years now, participating in your um, job fairs, right Mike? Yes. Job fairs. And for the last year or two, Chris has been coming up to do mock interviews. So it's an opportunity that you should take advantage of, in my opinion, to get into an interview situation with somebody who, who knows her stuff. She's one of our very best employees. She knows how to interview. She knows what to look for. And then she'll give you feedback. What can you do better? What did you do well in? You can hone those skills. Among all the skills you need, one of the very first are a set of interviewing skills. How to prepare, how to present yourself, and how to begin. Javier and I have been talking lately about branding, right, Javier? Right. Branding. We've talked about his branding. We've talked about my branding. You need to think about your own branding starting now and to be very intentional about that even in a mock interview or a real interview because you're beginning your own personal branding, your professional branding for potential employees and networks that you want to create. Okay, so the right side in the white section of this are what we believe are reasons why you ought to very strongly consider this. And I blame Mike, actually I give credit to Mike, because this really links back to his vision that spawned this visit the last two days. His vision for Talbert House to become the employer of choice for you students. So you'll see in this list, which I'm not going to cover in great detail or much detail at all, competitive salary and benefit packages, for agencies like ours, exclusive of hospitals, which tend to pay more. But we, we compare our salary and benefit packages to like agencies, not just in Cincinnati or Hamilton County, but our region, our state, and even nationally, and we, we do pretty darn well in that area. You'll see other things listed there like training. We have a training department. Uh, for some students, like the class that I'll be in, Sean's class this afternoon, they'll each get a packet which includes this information plus training materials for January through, through March. And it's like 20 pages of trainings that we are offering. And that's something that not all new graduates think about. We think about, okay, what am I going to get paid? But what are my benefits? And who, how much does the agency pay? What are my costs for health care? But also, what are the opportunities to get supervision to pursue licensure? And does the agency pay for that? Yes, we do. We help you pay for that. We provide supervision to people pursuing their licensure for the uh, master's level people. We have a training department. We have full-time training staff. Uh, training is convenient. You can come on site to get that. We have annual requirements for training. We provide all the training to make that convenient for you. Uh, for some of our positions at bachelor's and master's level, we provide monthly bonuses for performance. If you meet or exceed certain uh, performance um, standards, you can get a, a cash bonus for that. Uh, supervision. Uh, training for leadership development is the best I have ever seen at any agency I've worked at or visited around the, the world, really. I've been to a few, uh, a few places. So please read through that. I think it presents con some compelling evidence why we ought to be on your I should consider them list. All right? So next handout. Blue sheet. We already have those. Great. Okay, top of, near the top of the blue sheet, you see a date of March what? 29th. Chris Eversall is coming up here on March 29th, not to do mock interviews, but to do real interviews. Why, sh why would she do that? If you turn the page over, because already, I've already covered most of the rest of the first page, but if you turn the page over, the top half describes a position called what? Clinical service provider, we refer to that as a CSP. That's a master's level position. You see bulleted out the various qualifications for that position. So those of you who are MSW students, you want to look at that position very carefully. The lower half of the page talks about another position, which is what? Case manager. That's a bachelor's level position. Those of you with uh, you know, verge, or on verge of the graduation there, need to look at that. 
So why, are, why is Chris, why do you think Chris is interviewing for these, these two positions? We need to fill some. We, we, we tend to have these positions open. We're a large agency. Um, we, we have several of each of these positions. Because of some new initiatives, we need more of each of these. We need about another 20 more of the CSP position, the top position. We're going to need at least another 40 more of the case manager position. Strong premium on licensure. So all things being considered, one candidate has licensure, the other doesn't. Who are we going to hire? Licensed. So as you think about declaring a major, you might want to think about what type of job do I want? What does the employer require in terms of degree and other credentials, licensures, and certifications that can help immensely in helping you choose uh, routes of study? Okay. So Chris will be up here March 29th to do real interviews for those two positions. Uh, we, need, we need more of them. Okay, Talbert House has been around about 47 years. It started out with a $10,000 budget. And imagine how many staff can you pay for today with $10,000? It was like zero. So we're now over $50 million, about a $55 million budget. And we've grown from three or four employees to about 900 employees. Centerpoint Health, for which I was the executive director, was an affiliate of Talbert House during its four-year lifespan. We merged fully into Talbert House last July 1st. So our 250 employees were brought in and now are part of that 900 employee mix. Talbert House has services at 35 or 40 sites across about five or six counties in southwest Ohio, including Hamilton and Warren and, and such. Okay. Um, okay, let's go to the next handout. We referred to this as the circle chart. About a year ago, our CEO and his vice presidents decided let's realign away from programs and let's realign around services. So consequently, we have five service lines. And you see those sort of spread out across the middle of the page. The bottom left are the central services, all those back office services like IT and HR and fundraising, community relations, et cetera, that support the service lines. So in the 12 o'clock position of this handout, you see what? What service line? <laughs> Youth Behavioral Health. There are two service areas within that, and they're each underlined. One is school-based, you see that? And one is community, right? Okay, let's talk a little bit about, uh, I want to talk, spend a little bit of time on this chart, because this is the one that will both give you an aerial view of the agency and what all we do, which is very comprehensive, as well as as we touch on a lot of the service areas within the circles, I think what will begin to emerge are some employment possibilities or areas that you might have interest in. So in the school-based, you see um, that within the youth behavioral service line, school-based is where you, as a bachelor's level employee, would be out in the school working with kids, taking them out of class, doing some education on kind of social development issues, prevention activities around how to protect yourself from uh, abuse in different forms or fashion. So you're mainly working with the kids and coordinating your efforts with teacher and other school staff. Okay? In the community base, you're working out of an office with kids and probably as well parents. One example is you might be working with kids who have been um, um, victims of sexual abuse. You might also be working with non-offending family members. Might also be working with the offending family member if that's where the abuse was perpetrated from. So we don't throw you into that without you being prepared to our satisfaction to work with that unique and challenging population. It's challenging clinically and it's challenging emotionally. Okay? So the community is office-based. People are coming to you for that. Let's move to the right, clockwise around there, and we get to the best service line, which is mine. That's adult behavioral health. Um, there's a lot of similarity between what's provided in youth and adult behavioral health in our treatment area, which is the upper half of that, you see that? We are providing treatment through about 50 masters or PhD level staff to adults who have either mental health and or substance abuse issues that are either 
insured by Medicaid or have no insurance whatsoever, which we call indigent. And we're providing those services across multiple sites, five or six counties in southwest Ohio. Quick side note, while still at Centerpoint, I signed a couple contracts through which we are providing behavioral health, meaning mental health and substance abuse services, to two other agencies, one of which is located in five counties outside of Hamilton County. They have 12 sites. We are currently providing social work services at eight of their 12 sites, and that has a, quite a bit of possibility for growth, more staff, more locations in those areas. So it's, those are east and northeast of Hamilton County. So you get progressively more Appalachian as you go east, of course. Very interesting population, a lot of substance abuse, a lot of mental health, not much uh, in the way of availability of services out there. Um, the community half, the lower half, are bachelor's level staff, case managers. We have about 55 or 60 of them, case managers that are providing case management, which includes you're seeing people in your office to assess what are their mental health